Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling. My name is Julian, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this evening. I'm going to go over a few housekeeping items here before we let our presenters take the stage. And the first one is going to be, how do you ask questions? You can use the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. I want to encourage you to ask any question at any time to any presenter at any time. So it doesn't have to be to the presenter that is speaking. Um, you can always get ahead and ask any questions you have. So we wanna make sure that you are addressing the presenter you want to answer your question as well too. Your camera and microphones are off throughout this session. So all you have to do is sit back, relax and enjoy the information. There's gonna be one more session after this and you can still sign up for that by going to strivescan.com slash Illinois, where all sessions are going to be available within about a week, all of the recorded sessions. So we're going to go ahead and get started to our first presenter, which is going to be from the University of California, Irvine, Irvine and we're going to allow them to get their screen share up and running. So I just want to encourage you to go ahead and use that Q&A chat box to your advantage tonight and get all the information you need. We'll leave it over to you, University of California, Irvine. Thanks so much, Julian. My name is Andrea. I am with the UCI, and I am a proud representative of not just UCI, but the whole University of California system. There are nine wonderful campuses. You see them on the screen here. We are all great academic institutions. UCI has the distinction of being a top 10 public school, but we also have a wonderful location. So we're located halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego, only 10 minutes from Newport Beach. Um, and so it's just, just this wonderful place, 75 and sunny, pretty much year round, we're really lucky. We're also located near a lot of fun attractions. Uh, we are 20 minutes to Disneyland and only about an hour and a half to some pretty good skiing and boarding as well. Our campus has a cool feature. Um, I think it's something that's really distinctive about us because it's not only the physical layout of our campus, but it also says a little bit about our philosophy of education. So when you look at the campus, you should see a big, huge circle. That bigger circle that you see on your screen there, that's a one mile perfect circle to all of your academic buildings and our two freshman residence hall buildings. Our two freshman halls are Middle Earth housing, named after Lord of the Rings characters, which is just a fun little fandom nod. And then down at the bottom of your screen, you can see two little blue circle arrows. That's where Mesa Court, our other freshman hall is. About 85% of our 6,000 freshmen live on campus. Um, we are a residential campus. We have uh, housing for upperclassmen students just beyond what you see on the screen here. The layout of the campus is meant to represent that everything is connected. So even though we're a large school, um, even though we're a research school, we don't have these silos of learning. We really think that our whole world is interconnected with majors, with um, kind of the way things um, work in our world. So you'll find a lot of professors, a lot of students, um, a lot of folks that have maybe teaching in two different schools or a double major or a major and minor in two very different disciplines, uh, things that we're known for. This is a very long list of all of our majors, but the things we're best known for, we're really well regarded in the medical field. So we have 10 different majors in biology. We have a lot of students who do pre-med or pre-health in any of the majors you see listed here, not just in that biological sciences column. We also have a school of medicine, a school of public health, a school of pharmacy, a school of nursing, and our own hospital as well. So lots in that area. The other area that we're really well known for is computer science and engineering. We're the only University of California with a full school of computer science. We have seven different majors in this school, so lots to choose from. Um, one of our more popular ones is our game design major, which is pretty great. We also have an awesome esports program, so uh, those a little bit go hand in hand. Uh, we are um, well regarded in these fields because we don't just teach you how to critically think in them. We also teach you how to have your hands on a project. So your freshman year, you can take a wearable tech course where you build your very own Fitbit. They usually end up being about this big on your wrist. So they're not quite the streamlined version you might buy at a store, but it's a great experience for our students who are engineering or computer science majors to get their hands on. Senior year, you'll also do a senior design project. Other things outside of STEM that we're well known for, we have a top 10 dance major in the country, a top five criminology program, 14 different languages, three different psychology majors, uh, lots to choose from in policy and pre-law. Um, so lots and lots to choose from. And then um, some great earth system science and environmental science programs as well. 
we want you to build your resume while you're in school. And especially as folks that are outside of California, you might not understand how um, great uh, an area Irvine is. Irvine is located in Orange County. The city of Irvine is a large city, over 250,000 people. Uh, it also has over one third of all Fortune 500 companies right in our backyard. So students intern at all the companies you see on your screen here and don't have to go very far to get to those opportunities. Uh, on your screen, you can also see the beautiful park that I mentioned right in the middle of campus, um, pretty much in the middle of your screen. Um, and you can see it's a pretty suburban urban area. So lots to do in the area. Over 70% of our students do undergraduate research. This is a great way to build your resume, especially if you're looking at graduate school or medical school. Um, but a lot of our students take advantage of it just as a way to either make money, make friends, or uh, get connected more with their major. We also do some great co-curricular programs, including one of the world's top study abroad programs. We're in at least 30 countries in non-COVID years, and we partner with all the other UC campuses. So you have a lot of leverage and a lot of great networking opportunities when you do that program or our program in Washington, DC, which gives you great access to internships um, in the DC area. Finally, we're the anteaters, we're the only anteaters in the country. It's a really fun mascot. Our students have a lot of school pride for being the anteaters. That is definitely associated with our D1 sports teams, but is also equally associated with our amazing esports teams, uh, with our um, Guinness World Records, like the world's largest dodgeball game, which you see a picture of the start of here. We have over 600 clubs on campus, just lots of great ways to get involved, meet friends, stay active, all of those great things. Finally, the UC application, it's a whole process of its own, but most important, the deadline is November 30th. We don't do early action nor early decision, and uh, we won't use SAT or ACT scores this coming year for any of the UC campuses. Finally, feel free to take a picture or I'll drop this in the chat. Um, this is our out-of-state site. This is a great page to get um, uh, in touch with me or to watch a campus presentation so you get the whole story. I hope you have a wonderful night and thanks so much. Awesome, thank you so much. Our next presenter is gonna be from Oregon State University and they are getting their screen share up. So go ahead and use that Q&A chat box, but we'll leave the floor over to you at Oregon State University. Thank you, Julian. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Um, thank you so much for being here with me this evening to learn more about Oregon State University. My name is Rachel Paris, I use she, her pronouns, and I am an admissions advisor who works with prospective high school students, just like you, to help you navigate applying to school and learning more about the university. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with OSU, um, we have multiple locations across our state in Oregon. We are out there as a university, so we encourage students to get out and have experiences to connect with their learning in the classroom. We have two campuses. Our main one is in Corvallis. I actually just uh, moved here and I love it so far. Um, I actually moved from Michigan, so Midwest folks. And then um, our second one is in Bend, Oregon as well. And then also we have an e-campus online as well. So for those who are concerned about remote learning, we are um, made an announcement for in the fall that we will be in person. But if you wanna do eCampus, feel free to check that out. Um, and that has great resources as well. So in college, you're going to have a lot of time outside the classroom. So getting involved is a great way. We have over 400 clubs and organizations. We have academic programs such as our engineering clubs. Um, we even have our own Corgi Club, which was started by our own tour ambassadors. We have an active Greek life with over 30 different chapters. Our music ensembles are also open for all students, so you don't have to major in music. We are the oldest marching band in the Pac-12, so that's a fun little fact for you. Our study abroad hits every continent. Um, and so we also have seven distinct cultural resource centers for students to get support and to share those resources as well. It's a great way to celebrate students from different backgrounds and identities. Getting involved really helps maximize your student experience and it helps you connect to campus, it helps you get to know other people. I personally met all of my friends and closest friends living in our living center, so in the dorms, but residence halls. Um, and so if you don't have a club or organization that you want to get involved in, you can get a group together 
Um, we also are Pac-12. So for those who are interested in sports, we're division one for seven men's and nine women's sports. And then we also have intramural sports where you play other OSU students in soccer, wheelchair basketball, volleyball, cornhole, and even esports. So again, getting out there really starts here. So as important as it is to be in class, we want students to get out and get involved. Um, we have, we are, OSU is one of two universities in the country that has all four federal grants for land, sea, sun, and space. So what does that really mean for you? So as a student, you're going to have multiple opportunities to participate in research beginning your first year at OSU. So you don't have to wait until your second or third year, you can begin immediately. Having research also allows you to connect what you're learning outside the classroom, as well as applying these experiences on your resume for future internships, employers, or even graduate school. It's a really great way to get engaged and to get involved. So OSU is organized into 11 academic colleges offering over 200 undergraduate programs. You don't have to apply to each individual college. Your OSU application serves as your admission to the entire university. Please use a QR code on the bottom left to explore more of the colleges and find your major. Some of our majors that we're leading in is our engineering programs. We have 15 accredited programs. Our business college has an 89% placement into the workforce after graduation. And for those who don't know what you want to major in, or what I like to say are academically curious, not an issue at all. We have something very unique is our university exploratory studies program, where you are able to get more academic assistance and support to help you determine what major that you want to major in. We also have an honors college as well, um, and that is a separate application. Um, it's a supplemental app to our regular. So what we consider. When making decisions, we look at multiple different criteria for our decision. We look at factors such as classes, your grades, your overall GPA, and the grade trend that you were in high school. Like I said, we don't accept you based off your major, so no need to declare a major. And I want to say that everyone is going to be re reviewed regardless of your GPA um, and your test scores. So part of the application is also an essay. We want to get to know who you are as a person and what you bring to campus as a future beaver. Also, we have, um, we are test optional. We were test optional before COVID and we will continue to be test optional. So no need to send those ACT or SAT scores, but if you prefer, feel free to send them. They can only help your application, not hurt them. So to complete your application, we need those transcripts, application and test scores if you choose to send them. So our scholarships and aid, the first type of aid is based off your application. So no separate application, but the deadline is February 1st. So it's really important to get your application in as soon as possible. Your application also serves um, as uh, your application for scholarships as well. So really important that you get those in. Our second type is scholar dollars, which is OSU specific, which houses thousands of dollars from outside sources. Again, you only can apply to scholar dollars once you're admitted student. So again, really important for that February 1st. And then the third type is our federal application for the form of the free application for student aid, which you fill out each year. So to stay in touch, um, please follow us on social media at Beaver VIP. Um, also, if you're wanting to learn more or need help with the application process, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me as your admissions advisor. I do everything on the East Coast. Um, so making sure that you have all the information that you need before you join us as a Beaver. And thank you so much for your time. Great, thank you so much. And we're gonna get moving on to Washington State University. We're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running, but go ahead and use that Q&A chat box to your advantage and sign up for any other sessions tonight at shrivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you, Julian. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Dela Cruz Kelly with Washington State University. I'm the admissions counselor working with all the students from Illinois and other Midwest states around you. I'm excited to work with you and your families because I'm a WCU alum and I was also an out of state student while I attended WCU back in 2008. WCU has six campuses across the state of Washington, including our global campus that houses all of our distance learning degrees. So you can earn your, your WCU degree truly from anywhere. 
Today, I'm gonna to focus on the Pullman campus. So as you saw on the previous slide, WC Pullman is located on the Eastern side of Washington state. Don't let our beautiful rural location scare you. On the Eastern side, you'll experience more than just rainy days that um, the Western side of Washington is known for. We have four distinct seasons with high temperature summers, low temperature snowy winters, and everything in between. So one of the so as one of the remaining college towns in the nation, uh, we attract a lot of big city entertainers at an affordable cost to our students. The eastern side of Washington has um, a lot of outdoor activities within a couple hours of our campus, from river sports to hiking trails, um, and then snowboarding and skiing in the winter time. Although we're a large school, we don't sacrifice your educational experience in the classroom. So we have a low student to faculty ratio of 16 to one. Almost 80% of our courses are 50 or less students. Almost 60% um, of our courses are 30 or less students. Uh, and that's starting your freshman year. So you definitely will have that small classroom experience starting when you first get to campus. If diversity is really important to you, 30% of our student body identifies as multicultural and about 34% of them are first generation. So that means a lot. Um, that means that there's going to be a lot of resources available to our students to help them succeed at our campus. At WCU, building community and feeling a part of the Cougar family is really, really important. So WCU facilitates this by requiring students to live on campus during their first year. Um, and for the fall of 2021, we're expecting to be um, back to in-person learning and folks living on campus again. Um, you know, as they would have prior to COVID. And so looking to the future, we will um, require students to live on campus. Health and safety is our number one priority. So if there are any changes to that, we'll definitely let our students know. Um, so requiring students to live on our campus their first year um, and through that experience we're able to help students find their home away from home whether that's with their floor mates attending pac 12 sporting events with friends and folks that they meet um, a concert joining clubs greek life or getting involved in intramural sports um, or maybe giving back to the community is your thing and so you get to know other folks through community service events lots of different ways to get involved and find that home away from home at wsu um, WSU has some really great academic opportunities for our students, including the WSU Honors College. All majors are compatible with this. Um, this is especially uh, cool for students who are interested in continuing to be in like AP or honors type of courses. Um, if you're used to the small classroom size of learning, the Honors College is a really great option for you. Um, and it doesn't cost anything additional. So you pay the same tuition as students who are not a part of the Honors College. We also award credit for any college level coursework that you completed in high school um, or at a different college or university through Running Start or early college. Uh, we have over 200 fields of study for WC students to choose from through eight out of our 11 colleges within the university um, as listed on your screen. So you could check out the different majors there and I'll drop links in the chat after my presentation. Every major has a research opportunity component um, and every major is able to study abroad. Our study abroad opportunities do span across seven continents. So at WCU, we have three types of scholarships available to out-of-state students that are automatic, and we automatically consider you for them based on the GPA on your transcripts when you apply. What you're looking at is the current scholarship amounts and the GPA thresholds for the fall 2021, spring 2022 school year. These amounts and GPA thresholds do slightly vary per year, um, but overall, you know, this is a really good um, outlook for you all to plan if you are a junior or sophomore in the room. Um, so we have two types of awards for our high school seniors and one type of award for our transfer students. If I've um, caught your attention so far with what I've shared, um, this is an important slide for you. So these are the three steps that you would need to complete when you're ready to apply to WSU. You'll apply at apply.wsu.edu. You'll pay or request a fee waiver for our $70 application fee. It's really easy to do that on our payment page. Our application is unique to WSU, so we're not on the common app. Um, so you'll want to definitely go to apply.wsu.edu. After completing our application, you'll submit your high 
high school transcripts or your college transcripts. Um, WSU no longer re reviews SAT or ACT test scores for admission purposes. Even if they're sent to us, we will not be reviewing them for admission purposes or for scholarships. We encourage students to definitely apply for financial aid through the FAFSA and submit a WSU general scholarship application to put you in the running for over 700 um, internal scholarships to WSU. And the dates that we want you to complete all of these items by is January 31st of the year you're applying. And that stays consistent and remains consistent throughout the years. So thank you so much for tuning in and learning more about Washington State University. Please stay connected with me. This is my contact information and I'll also be dropping that in the chat. Awesome, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to Soka University of America and we are gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, just want to continue to encourage you to use that Q&A chat box as we have two presenters left. So we'll leave it over to Soka University of America. Yes, thank you so much for having me. My name is Aaron. I am with the Office of Admission here at Soka University of America. I'll likely just be referring to it as SUA as it is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, the of America distinction is because we do have a sister school in Tokyo, Japan. We are located in Southern California, Orange County, not too far actually from UCI. We're really a mission-driven university, not a tuition-driven university, and everything that we do on campus, curriculum through student life, is very much based uh, or centered around this um, statement to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. We really hope that by the time our students graduate, they can, in some capacity, live out this uh, really great mission statement in their lives, be it through work or just um, whatever they're involved with in life. So what makes a global citizen for us is really having these three components that you see on screen, the wisdom, courage, and compassion are great things that we look for in our applicants, but really are components that we hope to develop in students throughout their four years here at SCUA. We are pretty new, opened up back in 2001. There's only 450 or so total undergraduate students on campus, and that's more or less the whole campus that you see there in the photo. 45% of our students are now international. So we're, we're kind of getting closer to a 50-50 split between our international and domestic students. We are a residential campus. About 98% of students live on campus. We're fully accredited. We have five concentrations that I'll go over on the next slide. Study abroad is a requirement of ours, as is having to take a foreign language. So Spanish, French, Japanese, or Chinese are what we offer. Average class size is about 12, and we are part of the NAIA in terms of the athletic teams that we carry. We have merit as well as need-based aid <clears throat> here at SUA. Pretty solid rankings for a, a newer institution, and we're hoping to keep those high as, as time goes on. The concentrations that we have to offer are seen on screen with some sort of uh, like course catalog uh, examples beneath them. The newest and I think maybe shiniest that we have is now our life sciences concentration, which is really your free health pre-med track for making a student really competitive for medical school. Uh, everything else is pretty solid. We do have a general education requirement that you have to complete. What's really nice about SOCA is that nobody declares their major or their concentration on the way in during application. We allow the flexibility for your first two years to be sort of exploratory. And then at the end of your second year, you would declare your concentration and then move forward in that direction. With the exception of life sciences, that's a pretty intensive concentration that you really have to have figured out pretty much by the end of your first year if you're going to take advantage of and, and study in. Um, so really great flexibility. It's meant to, to help students feel like they can take ownership in their education and not feel locked in at the start, which is kind of nice. Uh, we, again, require students to study abroad. So we have those four target languages. You'll spend one semester, your third year abroad in a, another country where you yourself will likely be a, an international student uh, and, and fully immersed in a program that is pretty much completely conducted in the target language, which is really great. The cost of which is included in your tuition. So your SOCA money covers your flight out, your flight back, visa, transportation and housing, as well as meal stipends for that trip, which is really great. 
Uh, just a brief overview of res life. So most students live in a double occupancy room their first year. A second through fourth year students can have like a split double suite where you would have your own private room. Everybody gets their own private bathroom, only two students to a room max. And there's a lot of great other amenities that come with your room and board. There is no change in price in terms of, you know, changing room sizes or whatnot. A lot of great stuff to get involved with on campus, clubs, part-time jobs, all that good stuff. Really similar to other schools that you've, you've heard from thus far. Uh, brief overview of our uh, university, university sponsored athletics that we have on campus. And if you have questions about those, feel free to send them on in the chat. But uh, we are a private institution. So tuition, room and boards are going to be the same for everybody. 32,250 for tuition, room and boards, another 13K. We have opportunity-based grants, merit-based scholarships, athletic scholarships, as well as other opportunities to help you fund your education. Uh, the really great thing about us is we don't really nickel and dime students once they're on campus. Once you're here, parking's free, printing is free, your laundry is free, and all students get a MacBook Pro when they're admitted and they keep them when they graduate, which is really solid. Uh, pretty standard application checklist. Just two things to keep in mind since you're pretty early in the game here. November 1st would be our early action deadline and January 15th would be our regular decision. So um, two great dates to keep in mind as you move forward. My name again is Aaron. This is my contact info on the slide. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Our application opens up in August. So August 1st is when you can get cracking on those apps. So. Thanks so much. That's my, my presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much. And our final presenter is going to be from Willamette University. And we're going to get their screen share up and running. So just want to encourage anybody who has any questions, go ahead and throw them into the Q&A chat box. And we're going to leave it over to Willamette University. Thanks, Julian. And good evening, everyone. My name is Claire Leitzen. I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission at Willamette University. I appreciate you taking um, some time to join us all this evening. Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, so we're about an hour south of Portland, which is probably the city you're most familiar with. Um, Willamette was founded in 1842. We are the oldest institution in the Western United States. We were actually a university before the state of Oregon was recognized as a state of the union. Um, so we've been around uh, quite a while. We are a four-year private liberal arts institution supported by three professional schools. So our College of Law, our Atkinson Graduate School of Management, which is the number one MBA program in the state of Oregon. And then we were recently joined by the Claremont School of Theology. Last but not least, we are one of the 40 colleges that change lives. If you've not heard of that organization, the acronym is CTCL. CTCL.org is the website. And I would encourage you to check out the other 39-ish institutions there, um, wonderful schools to look into for part of your college search process. This is a numbers snapshot for you, what I like to call. We have 1,800 undergraduate students and 600 graduate students, so we are primarily an undergraduate institution. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size is about 17, and so I usually joke with students if you are hoping to be anonymous when you go to college. Glam, it might not be the best place for you, right? Um, we have 52 academic programs, so there's not shortage of things to study there as well. Uh, a couple fun facts for you here. We have 305 acres of land that we own just north of our campus. It's called Xena. It's what I like to call an outdoor academic playground, particularly for our environmental science and our biology students who can take samples and then bring them back to the lab on our campus to study very hands-on experiences there. We have a 54-year partnership with Tokyo International University. Um, their sister campus is called Tokyo International University of America, or TIUA for short. And they send about 120 international students over every year, and they're embedded into our campus culture. So it's a wonderful cross-cultural experience for our students to be able to engage with international students right there on our campus here in Salem. We are 76 feet away from the state capital of Oregon, and I'll show you a photo of that here in a moment. And 80% of the interns in that building are Willamette students. And so I think that speaks really well to the rapport we have, not only with our local government, but also with the city of Salem at large. And last but certainly not least, we have over 66 study abroad programs in about 45 different countries around the world. Um, and we do have many students who choose to study abroad throughout their time at Willamette. Since we can't obviously be together today, um, I wanted to show you a couple pictures of our campus. So this building that you see in the front here is the original building of Willamette University back when we were founded in 1842. And then as I just mentioned a few moments ago, the state capitol, as you can see there, is across the street. 
I'll draw your attention to these big five tall trees on the left side of your screen. Those are called the star trees. They were planted on Willamette's 100th birthday and they are the largest sequoia trees outside of the Redwood Forest in California. If you go under them and look up, it actually does create the shape of a star in the sky, which you can see on my virtual background behind me, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, they are a very majestic sight to see and I hope you get to do so sometime. This is my personal favorite spot on campus. This is the mill stream that runs through the heart of our campus that connects to the Willamette River, which is where we get our name. In the background there is our undergraduate library with our beautiful Whipple clock tower. And then the green space you see with the white Adirondack chairs is a wonderful social hub of campus, if you will. It's hard to walk past here without seeing a familiar face or a friendly face go by. This gives you an idea of where we're located in Salem, just to orient yourself. This is our campus, again, the state capitol right here. And this is downtown Salem, very much a college town. We've highlighted some of our students' favorite coffee shops and restaurants here. You can walk to the movie theater, you can walk to the grocery store. And then we're also right across the street from the Amtrak station. So it's really easy to get up to Portland if you wanted to go explore with some friends. Also really easy to get to the airport if you needed to fly back home to Illinois. We're about an hour to the coast, an hour to Portland, and an hour to the mountains. So very centrally located within Oregon as well. Talk a little bit about our academic experience here. As I mentioned, there are many, many um, undergraduate majors and minors that I encourage you to look at on our website. So I just want to highlight a couple of our academic distinctions here. Um, number one being our hearth system. And the best way I can describe our hearth system um, is an academic family room. For, so for the sake of example, let's take the chemistry hearth. Let's say you had a chemistry class, class earlier that day, and then you go back to the chemistry hearth to study. It's a space where there are comfy couches, chairs, desks, and you're among people who you probably had class with earlier that day who are maybe studying chemistry. And then surrounding that space are the chemistry faculty offices. So you can walk across the hall and ask them questions about class. You can ask them questions about research opportunities, study abroad opportunities, you name it. It's all kind of very interconnected and kind of creates a very natural, organic tutoring space, if you will. The second distinction I want to point out about our academic experience is our experiential learning credit. It is one of your general education requirements at Willamette. And we require students to do one of three things before they graduate, either study abroad, do research, or have an internship. A part of Willamette's mission statement says that we're turning knowledge into action. So we believe it's obviously important what you're learning in the classroom, but we want you to take it one step further and apply it very directly outside of that classroom experience. It helps you build your resume so you're ready to jump into either um, graduate school or your career, depending on what might be next for you after you finish with us at Willamette. I mentioned earlier we have graduate schools, so which means we have dual degree programs. So we have a three plus three law program, a three plus two business program, and then a three plus one data science program. So all of those include your undergraduate degree as well as your graduate degree or professional degree in a year less combined than if you were doing them separately. So it saves a year of being in school, saves a year of paying tuition, and gives students that upward mobility to get their career started. We also have a 3-2 forestry and a 3-2 engineering program. The two years, the second two years at both of those programs are at affiliate institutions. And if anyone has specific questions about those, I'd be happy to answer those um, where you might be able to go to afterwards. Talk a little bit about life outside of the classroom here. Um, I'm our, sorry, reading the chat here just to make sure. Oh, love the star, how cool. <laughs> That's wonderful, thanks Andrea. Um, we have two or three things outside of the classroom experience um, that our students are involved in on average. We have over a hundred clubs and student organizations. So there's certainly no shortage of opportunity of things to get involved in there. One of our most popular programs is our campus recreation and outdoor program. Um, we have a multicultural and affinity group programs as well for students who are looking to be um, in community with those who identify the way that they do. And we also have a very robust student government on our campus. We have 19 NCAA Division III varsity sports, and we will be 20 this coming fall. We are um, adding a women's triathlon team, which we are very excited about, kind of a niche sport there. About 25% of our undergraduate students do participate in varsity athletics. And then we have club sports, which are not as competitive or as time consuming, but you do still have to try out for. And then we have a plethora of intramural sports that our students love. You don't ever have to have picked up a basketball or kicked a soccer ball to be able to be a part of one of those teams. We also have 20 music ensembles and performing arts clubs that ranges from vocal and instrumental music to theater to dance. 
um, as well as orchestras and bands. Those are the two I'm forgetting there. You don't have to be studying music or theater to be a part of any of those ensembles um, if you're not studying them academically speaking. About 15% of our undergraduate students participate in fraternity and sorority life. So I look at that in the best of both worlds, right? If you're interested in being a part of those philanthropic communities, the opportunity presents itself to you. And if not, it's not an overwhelming presence on our campus either. I'll talk a little bit about applying to and paying for college, which I know is always on people's brains. Um, we are a common application exclusive school. We have an early decision, early action deadline in November and a regular decision deadline in January. Three things to know about our application. Um, there's no application fee, no supplemental materials, and we also are a test optional institution and we have been test optional for the last five years. Merit scholarships are considered with your common application to Willamette and those are renewable for the four years that you're at Willamette. We also have a handful of competitive scholarships that you can see on the screen here for students to be able to apply to. Again, you don't have to be studying music or theater to be a recipient of those competitive scholarships beauty of the liberal arts, right? And last but certainly not least, we offer need-based financial aid um, via the FAFSA, and we do have paper FAFSAs available for students who might need them. I will leave you with this. Um, I am your admission counselor um, at Willamette. I'm originally from Illinois, so I always love to work with students from that area. Um, my contact information is there, and we also have wonderful virtual visit opportunities for you to continue to get to know Willamette and the beautiful Pacific Northwest at that website right there. Um, but thank you for taking a piece of your evening here with us, and I'm going to pass it back to Julian. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we are going to get into a round robin style of questioning and we're going to keep it nice and flowing here. Uh, the first question is going to be what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to get started with University of California, Irvine. Uh, I think what's really important in the college search process is to find a place you can be happy, not a place that has great rankings so that all your friends are going. Because uh, if you're happy out of school, you're going to do well in class. You're going to find friends. Um, and that's going to help you start a great career, no matter what you choose. Awesome. Thank you. And Oregon State University? I think my advice would also, you know, make sure you do your research. I'm a big researcher, um, especially at OSU. You know, ask those hard questions. Ask, you know, what am I going to get? You know, what is... You know, my housing, you know, what is the student faculty ratio? Like, don't be afraid to ask those questions. And if they aren't answering, you know, that's on them. But ask those hard questions. Don't be afraid. We want to, you know, we want to learn too. Awesome. Washington State University. Um, on the note of researching, I think my advice would be to uh, never assume you know everything about a college or know everything about what rural schools are, urban schools are. Kind of keep your options open. Attend as many high school visits um, to, your, to your high school as you can um, or attend as many of these six by sixes as you can so that you really know, you know what's out there and what your options are. And maybe you'll learn about a unique opportunity that you didn't know about before that convinces you to attend that school. Great, thank you. Soka University? Yeah, also, these are all really, really great points. I think for me, biggest thing is to, to stay organized during your application process. You know, you can't finish the race without getting to the starting line. So just making sure that you have everything that you need checklist wise in and kind of on top of the mind so that you don't miss a deadline and just kind of end up, you know, regretting certain things that, uh, that kind of gets go by or, or slip your mind. So stay organized, continue to attend these events, uh, learn as much as you can. And um, yeah, hopefully we can, we can see you all in some pretty great places in the future. Perfect, and Will Amit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the statistic is that upwards of 80% of students will change their major at least once before they graduate. My advice to you is do not pick a college solely on the major that you think you want to study. Consider lots of different options in terms of cultural fit, in terms of community, other opportunities, other majors that might be able to offer you there, um, because there is a large chance that you might change your mind once you get there and see the wonderful opportunities that present themselves to you. Awesome. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, the next question is going to be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we're going to start right back up at the top. I'm, I'm lucky to be at a campus that's pretty quirky um, uh, with the anteater mascot there and the Middle Earth housing and Lord of the Rings lore. Um, but probably my favorite is that we do this 
Um, and I apologize to my presenters, co-presenters, they've seen this before, but this is a, a little anteater. And at sporting events and esports events and graduation, we go zot, zot, zot. We cheer this all the time. Um, and it's almost like even a secret handshake. So I'll be at a college fair um, in Illinois or on the East Coast, and someone will come up that's familiar with UCI and they'll go zot. So it's just kind of a fun, quirky thing we do. Awesome. And Oregon State? So one of our really big events um, on campus is our annual uh, salmon bake. And so it's at our Native American Longhouse. And so everyone gets um, very excited. They do a traditional salmon bake and everyone kind of lines up um, on, by the Longhouse and kind of tries it. It's delicious. I've never had salmon like that in my entire life. And so I was very sad that COVID uh, kind of delayed us last year, but hopefully this fall we'll have it again. So. If you're in the area, check us out. Awesome. Washington State? Um, I think my favorite events that happen on campus are our family weekends. So if you know anything about Washington State, Pullman is kind of a destination. You don't just find yourself, you know, driving through Pullman. It's kind of like you need to be purposefully going there. And family weekend truly brings out alums. It brings out family members and friends of our Cougs. So a lot of folks who would have never found themselves in Pullman get to see it and experience what it's like to be um, in Pullman. And it's a really great time for you to just celebrate um, in the fall. It's usually associated with a football weekend and in the spring it's usually um, right after our spring break so it kind of gives students a boost and gets them ready and prepared for graduation season. Awesome thank you. Soka University? Yeah we have a really great tradition of um, hosting the community on uh, what we call the international festival where in May typically we, we bring pretty much the entire community uh, onto campus and showcase student clubs, the dance performances, food, all sorts of just fun stuff that uh, a lot of folks in the area aren't familiar with potentially, as I think there's some preconceived ideas of, of Orange County being somewhat homogeneous. And that's it's really not the case and certainly not the case on our campus. And so I really love that we have that tradition of opening up and bringing people on the campus to, to just learn more about our students, our community, and share that with the rest of Orange County. So um, yeah, that's something that we missed last year and we're hopeful for this year, but we'll see what happens. Thank you. And Willamette? Hopeful for lots of things this year, right, Erin? Um, one of my favorite campus traditions is our student-run coffee shop called The Bistro. It was started by students back in the early, I guess, late 80s um, by two students who wanted a space for their peers to be able to hang out on campus. Um, and when they started that, coffee shop, their contract said that the cookie and the coffee always had to be $1. So you can go to the bistro any time of day. Our admission office frequents very often, um, but the cookies are about the size of your head and they are only a dollar. And that's one of my favorite parts about Willamette University. Awesome. All right. And the final question is going to be, give an interesting or, or fun fact about your school. So an interesting or fun fact about your school. And we'll start right back up at the top. Um, interesting or fun fact, uh, Blizzard Entertainment, which is a huge uh, software game, uh, computer game company, their headquarters is actually located on our campus. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we have great connections with them. Uh, so that's a little fun fact. Nice. Oregon State? So something fun that we started actually this year because of um, COVID to engage our students is doing e-campus sports. So I, like I mentioned in our presentation, um, we do Madden, Rocket League. Um, and so a lot of our students have been getting engaged with that and really have loved it. So kind of a fun uh, thing that we're beginning a tradition for. Awesome. Washington State? Um, a fun fact. So WSU, we're home of the Cougars. Um, and you can, see, you can see right here, we always say go Cougs. And the only response back is go Cougs right back. And we're known for waving the flag. So if you ever watch, um, I think it's college game day, you'll always see a Cougar flag present. It's called Old Crimson. And um, there's actually like an exhibit at the ESPN Center that showcases it. Awesome. Soka University? One fun fact that not a lot of people know about is that we're actually, we host a, a group, um, I guess a t more or less a sports talent group called uh, Boris on our campus. And they bring a lot of their MLB players because our agents, their agents function out of our, our university athletic center. And so a lot of our students actually have 
really great access to uh, MLB players during the late spring for autographs and photo ops and stuff. Um, and it's been sort of a, a really hush hush deal, but um, I'm always excited because I'll oftentimes see some of my favorite players walking through the cafeteria on this really tiny little known campus. So um, that's something that's always been really cool. Awesome. And then Willamette? Willamette's first graduate was a woman. We've been a co-educational institution since 1877. One of the first, yes, Kim, um, one of the first uh, earliest co-educational institutions. Her name was Emily York and she graduated from, um, back then we had a school of medicine. That is something we are very proud of. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us tonight. I'm just sharing my screen one more time here. And there's gonna be a quick four question uh, survey that's gonna be up here once you close the window. You can sign up for one more session that's coming up next at strivescan.com slash Illinois. And you can view all the recordings there as well within about a week. Good luck on the college search process. And thank you to our presenters for uh, sharing all this great information tonight. Have a good one and have a great rest of the week. Take care.